Today we'll be changing the brakes in this 2009 CLS 550 and uh, pretty much every CLS at this point. Now what I have is the jack here. I do have it jacked in. This is on flat ground. I end up using that jack because my house is way up there and it's on a hill. I didn't want to bring my big floor jack. But anyways, the first step I'm going to do is take off this tire with this, uh, my tire wrench right here. We're going to find out what size it is right there. That's it. It's a 17 millimeter. So what I'm going to do is take off all of these and I'll get back to you. So I do have the wheel off now. And for safety, I did put this jack underneath here. I don't know if you can see it. Just in case my main jack fails. And this is a T30 bit. And what I'm going to do is just take this out. Not all the way yet. Because my first step, I spray some WD-40. This thing was really stuck. Is I have to reuse the same hardware. Right here. And with this, I'm going to get a flathead, just like this. And here, well, don't know if you guys see what I'm doing. I will have to reuse this hardware. It's, you're not supposed to, but O'Reilly's, they didn't have that. So I have to reuse it. And they also, they use boot slides on the back right here I'm gonna have to reuse those too so the next step is I have to remove get a T these little caps right here you gotta pop them off just like that and a lot of the times they don't come with these caps and I'm glad it came with the cap so I'm gonna reuse this so I'm putting this right here so I did end up taking out this one guide pin right here and well, someone on YouTube said it was the T40, which um, that guy, he did not know what he was talking about. I'll tell you right now, it's a 7 millimeter. It's not a T40. A T40 has a star on front. This is clearly not, he can't really see it good. Not one of these, not one of those. Let's see. Anyways, it's one of these. And the size it is, is a 7 but I don't have a seven in here. So what I ended up doing was I ended up um, getting a, my one fourth I had right here and that ended up doing it. But you should get a seven, seven millimeter, but it's not a T40, so don't even try that. Cause I got stuck and was paying to take it out. It took me a few hours. So the next step I'm gonna do now is take out the other slide bolt, which is, here, let me, Stick this in here so you can see it. Right there. Can't really see it good, but. Now that the two guy pins are out, I'm going to take off the caliper, which is running. I am going to set it right behind here so it's not dangling out the way. And just like that, that's fine. The next step is. My old brake pass, he was metal on metal, which is bad. Um, oh, and there is a sensor, but it's not on this one. It's on the passenger side. I'm doing the driver's side. But normally there's a sensor on the that brake pad and just plugs in. And when I take off the next one, if I do do it, I will, um, I'll show you guys what it looks like at the very end of the video. So the next step is I need to take off... These two bolts right back here where my finger are on. You guys will see them. Right there. So check this out. These nuts, these 18 millimeter nuts for the bracket were super tight. So I have my wrench on here. I got my jack. I'm just doing that. Now these were over tight. Normally you should be able to get these with the hammer and just hit them off. But for some reason... These are very, very tight. So I just do this all the way until it goes as high as it could go. And then I lower it back down and just keep doing it until I get it loose. Or I could do it by hand like I can on the bottom bracket. But the trick to this is, is that 
the bomb bracket is like I could take out by hand now. I mean, by with just my hand on the socket. But what I want to do is loosen up the top bracket so that way when I do get the top bracket out, the bracket won't go, won't be moving. So you want both of the nuts still in and you just want to loosen them up, then take them out by hand. All right, guys, I've been hitting at this now for probably 15 minutes. And if you see all the dents and stuff I made in it, it's, it's coming off now. But, I'll show you something. This right here is why you use anti-seize. That right here was just, I even sprayed it with WD-40, but that was caked on. But, that's the old rotor here now so what i'm gonna do now with brake cleaner is because they have some ceramic coating on here from the factory and this is where your e-brake goes so i'm gonna do that too wipe it down and i'm gonna do both sides of the rotor and that helps clean a lot of that um that stuff that ceramic coating off so, just like that. Yeah, I'm going to do a lot better cleaning and do a few times over it. Just over and over. And you can kind of feel like when you have all that ceramic stuff off because it feels a lot more gritty. See, it's all off now. But I'm gonna do about one more treatment to it. Then next I'm gonna do it to the other side. Now that all the sides on my rotor are clean, I'm going to get a bunch of this brake cleaner and just really clean that hub. We should get this part. This is really where it rusts at. And I do have some anti-seas, and I am going to put this on here, so for the next person who needs to do a brake change, it won't be impossible for them to do. I mean, you won't have to hit 50 times with the hammer. Okay, so I'm just going to clean it up and try to get this thing as clean as I can, and I'll get back to you. So that's about as clean as I'm going to get right now. Now it's time for the anti seize. I like getting it all around here, the hub. And a lot of this back, got too much on the brush. I'm just gonna just go around it just like that. Oh, and this right here is how you adjust your brake if you Right there, that little spur thing, if, it, if your e-brake's too weak. But mine's fine. When you get your new rotors on, it might be a good idea to adjust it. But my e-brake is... It works fine, so when I put the new rotors on, it's going to be the same. Now, this is the first step. With your clean, your brand new rotor you have... What you want to do is you want to clean the, um, let's see, it goes on just like, I'm going to slide it on first. This is a heavy one. You want to line it up with the hole on it, with the holes where you see, just like that. But now, I have to find my, yeah, right there, because you have to make sure you're, uh, forget what this is called, the safety your safety bolt fits on here. Okay. I'm going to screw this on. Then when it's nice and tight. Uh, you don't want too tight. This is just for safety. You honestly don't even need it. And it just makes the install a lot easier. See that? Just like that. And you don't want too tight. It's about hand tight right there. Now my next step is I'm going to get the bracket and same thing with the brake cleaner. Just like I did that, I'm going to just spray it 
all with it. Let's see if you guys can see here. And I'm going to, when I spray, I'm just going to clean it. Clean the surface very good. I'll just show you guys a snippet of it. Get my wire brush. And this is what your assembly slides on. So you do want to clean up both of these sides really good. Now when these are cleaned up, I'll get back to you. Alright, sorry I did most of this. But I have it nice and cleaned. Oh, and what I did is with this sandpaper. Because there's a, some burrs on this right here. And since this has no hardware, this is the hardware. What I did was I got my sandpaper and I sanded this down a bit. So it won't catch on the new brake pads. And on my new brake pads, let me show you one. Right there where it slides in, just like that, in and out. It had a little grip here, so I got some sandpaper and made that smoother. And I got my brake cleaner and cleaned my pads too with it. So now, I'm just adding my lubricant on it for brakes. I'm going to add a good bit everywhere on all four sections. And my next step is to, once I have it all nice and rubbed in with my finger, I'm going to install it back on here. So I'm tying up these two back bolts on here. And you don't want them, you don't want to strip them. You want them tight though. Which that's uh, what I'm doing right now. I did have my my big breaker bar for here, but wow, just like that. But it was too long; it won't fit. That's right, right here. They cut my finger on this too which sucks but oh well so the next step is i'm going to compress that piston what i do is i had the hood open here and i opened up the cap right there to the um the brake fluid so any back pressure it won't bust this uh caliber it could just push it back if you do it slow it honestly it shouldn't happen it should go without leaking out so i do have a brake compressor tool but to be honest with you my favorite thing is this big c clamp because it's it, just like that i'm gonna keep compressing it i'll get back to you when it's compressed i do want to show you how i have it just like this and you want to compress it nice and slow so I have it compressed all the way. The next step, just like that, and you take out your old brake pad. Now the new one, I already have my grease and stuff on. And I'm just going to slide it right back in. Got push in the same way it went out. Okay. Sounds like you might have to push it a little good. Oh, and right here. Where that hole is on the new brake pad. If you have the sensor which is on the passenger side in this vehicle. It will go in this bracket and slide right in that hole. Which I don't have the uh, the sensors on the right hand side. Not the driver side. So my next step is to push this in. And I'll get back to you. So I got the brake caliper in here, and what I did was it was off just like this. So before I slid it on, I moved this one in, and I slid in. Just like that. Next I have to install my guide pins in. Right here, I can't see them good. Right there. But first what I want to do is um, I'm going to clean them up with some brake cleaner and I might even get that sandpaper and what I'm going to do with it is um, give it a nice just sand it down a little bit to get all this rough old grease off like this 
And this right here is more fine sandpaper. Just enough to get that that old grease off. You don't want to over sand these. You don't want them any gritty. You want them smooth. So use a smooth sandpaper. Okay? Just like that. Now I'm going to hit them up with brake grease one last time. I mean, brake cleaner. And wipe them off. Now I'm going to get my brake lubricant, which is right here. And normally I do recommend getting a new kit for these. A new boot kit. That comes with the boot. But, however, um, mine, it they didn't have it there, the hardware kit. So I'm just using these. And you can buy these kits. I mean these brake thing. Way cheaper than what I paid for it. Just like that. About that much. I'm going to slide into the boot. You want to slide in. Yep. Here. It's in. Next I'm going to get this one nice and lubed up. And when you slide in remember. This part goes in this is the part you have to tie it in a lot of people don't make sure you don't install it that way install it this way that right here because you have to use your your um your wrench to install it yep just like that you hear it so what i'm gonna do now is um i'm gonna get my my one fourth I had to use because that's right here because I don't have this seven millimeter and I'm gonna tie those up then I'll let you know the next step okay so before I wrap up here these are my two caps for your guide pins the dust caps make sure they're nice and in there's one the bottom one's right here Just like that nice and tight now you do need your tensioner back on which this is mine and the way i have this on is let me pop this out real quick i'll show you how i put it on right now back up the camera now you should get a new one but o'reilly's didn't have a new one so i put on just like that now this side i gotta pry this back now I like to get my hammer, where is it? Just like that. Now get your flathead uh, screwdriver, which mine is right here. And you want to push down, just like that. And make sure it's all on, everything's on good. Which it is. Now, um, the very last step is obviously I have to throw my tire on. And do remember, I do have a bunch of safety here in case it falls down. Three jacks in different location, locations. But I do think the tire one is pretty self-explanatory. Now, when you are done with this, I do have to do my other side, though. But when you are done with this, make sure you come back here and put your this all the way tight. And before you're done, what you want to do before you drive it, you want to... Um, pump your brakes a few times so you know these work good then when they are all nice and good you could drive around a, a lap all right the neighbors are super loud sorry about that um but now i am going to go in the car pump the brakes a few times and make sure these brakes work good so i'm going to do that off camera but right now what i'm going to do is get ready to install my new tires Normally I'll put some anti-seize here so when my, my new tires could come off easy. But as you can see, these tires need to be replaced. I did not know they were this bad. But this is what's bad. That's awful. Very bad. Very dangerous there. See it? Well, I'm going to install them and I'll get back to you. Now I put the tires back on and... I already took it for a lap up and down here, and it it drives and stops good. But those are my new brake pads.
pretty cool. And they work at, and I end up doing both sides. And the other side, I put this instrument, which is, that's kind of easy. When you take it off, you'll see how it goes in. Um, but that's the tires. That's the brakes for you. Thanks for watching.